Superstring theory is an attempt to realize a dream that Albert Einstein had for the last 30 years of his life, but unfortunately he was ever, never able to realize. It was a dream of formulating a unified theory of physics, a theory that would describe everything in the universe from the smallest speck of matter to the farthest reach of the most distant galaxy using one idea, one master principle, one equation in a sense that could govern everything from the small to the big and everything in between. Superstring theory, in a sense, answers a question that's been around for 2,500 years. It's a question that was asked by the ancient Greeks, namely, what is the stuff around us made of? What constitutes, what's the basic ingredient in everything we see in the world around us? So concretely, if you take a block of wood or a piece of iron, you cut that piece in half, cut the remaining piece in half again, and keep on slicing into ever smaller pieces, what is the finest uncuttable ingredient that you'll finally come to? Now certainly in our age we've learned that you'll get to atoms if you cut sufficiently finely, but we've also learned that atoms are not the end of the story. They can be split, they can be cut into finer ingredients, little electrons that swarm around a, a nucleus which itself has protons and neutrons, and even those particles are not the end of the story. We learned in the late 60s that protons and neutrons have quarks inside of them. Now, string theory comes along and says there is at least one more layer of structure to this story. It strongly suggests that inside every particle, inside an electron, inside a quark, inside every particle you've ever heard about, is something else. And something else is a little filament of vibrating energy. And the filament, we call it a string because it looks like a string, can vibrate this way or that way. And just like the different vibrational patterns on a, a string on a violin or a cello give rise to different musical notes, the little vibrational patterns of the strings and string theory don't give rise to different sounds, but they give rise to the different particles in the world around us. So an electron, according to string theory, would be a string vibrating in one pattern, call it an A. Or a quark would be a string vibrating in a different pattern, call it a C. So in a sense, string theory says that everything that we see in the world around us is nothing but the different notes, metaphorically speaking, that the little strings in string theory can play. So the universe, is, in a sense, is a, is a grand cosmic symphony. And in this way, the theory really gives us a way of thinking about everything from one unified perspective, one idea, in a sense. One of the most bizarre features of string theory is that Indeed, it does unite the laws of the big general relativity with the laws of the small quantum mechanics, but it only does so at a particular cost. The theory demands that our universe have more than three space dimensions. In fact, it demands that there are at least six and probably seven more spatial dimensions that as yet nobody has ever seen. It's a really strange idea. First off, what does it mean? Well, when we say that the universe has three space dimensions, we mean that it has, for instance, left, right, it has back, forth, and it has up, down. Those are the three spatial dimensions within which we are all immersed and we move through freely in day-to-day -day life. Literally, the theory is saying that in addition to those three known dimensions, there are other dimensions, other directions, which in principle we could move if we could access them. Now, the question is, where are they? We don't seem to see them. We only see three dimensions, so where are the others? And one idea, not the only idea, but one idea is that the extra dimensions the theory demands are very tiny. They're kind of curled up and crumpled up. Sort of imagine if you had a, a piece of paper that you roll up into a tube and you make that tube thinner and thinner and thinner. The circular part of the tube will get smaller and smaller. In fact, at some point it'll be so small that you can't even see it with the naked eye or even with sophisticated equipment. So a direction or a dimension, if it's very small, can be hard to see. And we think, possibly, that the extra dimensions that string theory demands are themselves so small, so tightly wound up, that they are too small for us to see with the, even our most sophisticated equipment. And that, perhaps, is the explanation for how there can be more dimensions than directly meet the eye. It's my feeling, and the feeling of many other people in the field, that within the next 40, 50 years, we will come to a new formulation of space and time that will largely be radically different from anything that we've ever encountered previously. And we will find that space and time as we currently think about them in day-to-day -day life, that's just approximation, a mere approximation to the deeper ideas that ultimately will be revealed. 
Now, what we can do with that, I don't, I don't know. You can use your imagination and let it run wild. Who knows? When you understand something well, that often is the first step to being able to control it. Will we one day be able to control space and control time to do things that at the moment are only part of science fiction? I don't know, but it is something which certainly is within the realm of distant, distant possibility.